Hey everyone, now I don't know how many of you pay attention to all of the reports out there for the next gen systems coming from Microsoft and PlayStation. Uh, a lot of people that watch this channel only play Nintendo games and if you do play more than that, maybe you are aware of some of the rumors and reports going on out there. Uh, but one thing that's obviously as a Switch owner been really concerning about this platform is that uh, by the time Xbox, uh, Scarlet, and PlayStation 5 come out, uh, the Switch will be severely behind in both a technological perspective, being 2015 tech versus something much newer, 2018-2019 tech. Uh, and in addition to that, also just being behind from a pure performance perspective. This is the worst performing home console on the market and uh, in terms of uh, just the raw performance. And already being behind PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, we're talking the base models, not even the Pro and the X, uh, it's going to be hard to fathom how third-party games like Mortal Kombat, you know, we just got Mortal Kombat 11 uh, and stuff like that could come to Switch, you know, The Witcher 3 as an example as well, how we can get those games coming to Switch basically from 2021 and on forward. Uh, people are worried that third-party support is just going to drop off a cliff. Now, Nintendo has ways they can combat this themselves, either by releasing a Switch Pro uh, that could significantly bump the performance, maybe by 1.5x the current Switch performance, or whatever the case might be. Uh, you know, maybe it's a whole brand new generation of Switch, and we're talking Switch 2, and we're getting 2 to 3 teraflops of performance, or whatever the case might be, which is possible right now with current mobile technology, uh, or something that we don't even know that's being developed inside NVIDIA that has a 10-year partnership with Nintendo. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see uh, what Nintendo does, either in response to those systems or just as the natural order. After all, we've had the 3ds we had the the 3ds xl we had the new nintendo 3ds and the new nintendo 3ds xl then we had the 2ds so we don't really know and with switch we've already had obviously the base switch then we had the slightly upgraded model switch which is basically just ba better battery life uh because it's probably using a new design chipset which is also featured on the nintendo switch Lite, which is why that also despite having a smaller battery has longer battery life but we have seen these three different models of switch two of them that well one that basically replaces the other and then obviously the light with cutback features uh you would figure that must mean there's going to be a, a boosted switch in the future with additional features or at least more performance or it'll be strictly an under tv system we don't really know what nintendo's got planned it's all guesswork at this point based on uh, little bits of information we get from rumors reports um hiring post uh, LinkedIn profiles and whatever the case might be uh, it's all guesswork at this point to connect dots and try to figure things out uh, if you're interested in maybe the uh, perspective of uh, oh my gosh Nintendo's going to release a super powerful Switch Pro or Switch 2 uh, maybe check out uh, Super Metal Dave 64's channel he does uh, he kind of leans towards that direction and provides all of his evidence for that uh, if you think the opposite of that well keep thinking the opposite of that because really none of us know but that's how Nintendo might combat the systems coming in. But what if I told you that Microsoft has actually opened a pathway for Switch, even as is Switch today, to continue to get third-party support beyond next year? What if I told you that AAA games, uh, such as MLB The Show, which, by the way, is going multi-platform now with its new contract, uh could potentially come to Switch next year and the year after and the year after that and not really be, you know, that much of a downgraded version. Sure, we're, you know, less FPS and stuff like that, but I mean, it wouldn't need to necessarily be a completely different game. Kind of like, you know, if you guys remember Madden and stuff back on the Wii, Madden on Wii was not even remotely the same game as Madden on the other systems. We're talking legitimate third-party ports. And the reason is because Microsoft is apparently launching at least two platforms uh, when the next Xbox launches. And one of them has been announced in Scarlet, uh, but the other one is uh, kind of behind the scenes. And they're all going to be Scarlet platforms, but they have code names behind the scenes that aren't Scarlet. Uh, and those code names are basically Anaconda and Lockhart. Uh, and we have a report from Windows Central, a very reliable place that only puts this stuff up when it's fairly legit. Uh, and we're going to go through this report just to look at what these systems are, and then I'll explain how Switch is somehow still in the game uh, because of what Microsoft is doing. Uh, very interesting. So let's let's get into it. 
All right, so inside inside the target specs of the next project, Scarlet, Anaconda, Lockhart, etc. So Scarlet's the overall name of the brand. Um, we don't know if it's going to keep that that name when it launches. Probably not. Uh, and then Anaconda, Lockhart are the uh, behind scenes systems that are, that make up the Scarlet brand. All right, just, just to give some background there. Um, so Microsoft is gearing up to reveal two pronged attack for next gen consoles, complete with a more affordable SKU dubbed Lockhart and a more beastly premium SKU codenamed Anaconda. Um, we don't know what they'll look like in any of that stuff. Uh, in, in 2019 reveal video, Xbox Cloud architect Kareem uh, Chowdhury said Scarlet would eat monsters for breakfast. And indeed, Anaconda looks as though it will be able to. According to several sources familiar with Microsoft plans, Anaconda is targeting around 12 teraflops of performance. Uh, now, this is just like a GPU performance metric. It does not tell you the whole story with performance. Teraflops is an important metric, but it's not the only metric that matters. Uh, but in this case, 12 teraflops would be basically taking two Xbox One Xs and duct taping them again together. Xbox One X has six teraflops of GPU performance, so it's like, like I said, having two of those duct taped together, uh, which is still a pretty beastly system. But there's more advanced tech going. I mean, know with the SSDs, uh, the better RAM, the better, lot, uh, lots of, of things that are just better. Uh, but 12 teraflops of performance is is, is very impressive. Um, the Xbox One X is a six. Xbox One S has 1.4. Uh, Lockhart, conversely, will support around four teraflops of performance. I want you to remember that number, four teraflops of performance uh, for Lockhart, which is actually two teraflops worse than the Xbox One X. But again, this doesn't mean that it's actually worse than Xbox One X. Um, a GTX 1070, as an example, is actually um, less teraflops of performance than older AMD cards that, you know, put out six teraflops, but the 1070 actually performs better because there's more to this than just teraflops. Just want to keep this in perspective because it's very unlikely that Lockhart's going to be outperformed by the X overall. Um, anyways, according to the marketing materials we've seen previously, it is being positioned as the most affordable entry point to next-gen experiences because it doesn't sound like PlayStation has anything planned but just a straight-up PlayStation 5. Um, teraflop doesn't really tell the entire story. Uh, custom tech being baked into the consoles. For example, Microsoft already spoke about ray tracing will be a factor in next-gen systems. And while Lockhart is less raw power than the X, so all the capabilities are elevated further than the X in various ways. Uh, both Lockhart and Anaconda reportedly report, support eight CPU cores targeting around 3.5 gigahertz, which does blow the switch out of the water. Uh, with Anaconda reaching a bit higher per core than Lockhart, so maybe 3.8 or something like that. That's that's pretty normal if it's a beefier system with better cooling. Uh, the relatively modest increase in clock speed over the previous-gen systems might seem mild, but vast improvements to caching, new silicon architecture, and other general bespoke proprietary optimizations will see Anaconda perform anywhere up to four to five times better than the Xbox One X. Basically, Ryzen. Um, they're going to be using AMD Ryzen CPUs. And Ryzen, um, even though Ryzen has lower clock speeds, um, than say maybe an Intel uh, chip or, or, or similar clock speeds to what they were using before. It's just a better overall performing chip with modern architecture. And I literally am editing this video with a Ryzen 2700X. And I can definitely say uh, it's a lot better uh, than people might realize. Uh, AMD really brought it with this Ryzen line. And that does appear to be what both the Xbox and PlayStation will be using. Uh, so this isn't anything to knock on PlayStation 5. We just don't really have specs or, or even rumored specs out there for PlayStation 5 yet. All right, um, let me see. Anaconda will perform anywhere up to four to five times better than the Xbox One X, even though it's only double the teraflops. Again, there's a lot more that goes into it than just the teraflops. Uh, if targets are met, we're told that at least Anaconda will guarantee 13 gigabytes of RAM for games, which is a lot. Um, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM on my computer uh, running at 3200 uh, speed and DDR4. It, uh, man, I haven't seen a game use more than eight even Red Dead Redemption 2. So that's a crazy amount of RAM available for games. Um, three gigabytes on the OS, so it'll have 16 total. Uh, the X, by comparison, offered a maximum of nine gigabytes for games, but it was kind of iffy on if you could get that extra gig, um, So, which was perfect, really, because uh, most games don't need more than eight gigs of RAM. Uh, as I said, I game on PC when I have an overload in RAM because I video edit, and I still don't have um, any games that come close to touching uh, more than eight gigs, uh, but it's nice to have all that RAM because you know if you're multitasking, you have Chrome open. Google Chrome infamously eats RAM. Um, the Xbox comparison offered a maximum of nine gigabyte for games, which uh, varied based on what the OS was doing. Microsoft also said in its reveal video the SSD could be used to throw in virtual RAM as necessary. So virtual RAM is a thing that hasn't really. <laughs> 
People always say you could download more RAM. That's kind of a, a, an ongoing joke in the PC world. Oh, just download more RAM. You can convert um, SSD uh, space into um, virtual memory, basically make it into a form of RAM. It's just not as good. Uh, it's not really something that I think anyone's realistically going to be doing. Uh, but, the, you know, that you could throw in more virtual RAM, you could do that with any SSD. So, um I mean, you could do it with a spinning disc, and it's really slow. <laughs> so, let's just leave it at this. People aren't going to take advantage of that. It's it's a it's a dumb dumb thing that's only useful in very select tasks, and gaming is not one of those tasks. Anyways, one huge focus of area for Lockout Anaconda is the NVMe SSD proprietary tech. And this is something that Nintendo can't do anything about. Uh, we're talking Gen Four SSDs. Um, these are the fastest hard drives on the planet. Um, I'm sure the Xbox uh, and, and PlayStation won't be using the fastest of the fastest because that'll be available on PCs as the tech advances further. Uh, but Nintendo can't do anything about that. They're going to have faster faster hard drives and stuff, You know, almost no load times. Things that take like a minute to load right now on the X will take like seconds. Uh, Nintendo can't do anything about that. That's just a pure speed bandwidth limit that Nintendo doesn't cross because they're not using Gen 4 Ryzen technology. Uh, Intel will eventually get there as well and, and, and all this stuff and using Gen 4, but right now uh, it, it's only AMD side of things that has this tech. Um, so it'll get rid of load times completely. I kind of talked about that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, the inclusion of the Project X Cloud across Xbox system allowed to start gaming via streaming. Yep, we already know about X Cloud. And um, based on what happened with Google Stadia, I think X Cloud's in a much better position. But we'll see. We don't know the, the, how that pricing is going to work out exactly, um, and how well it's going to perform, anyways, too. All right. Next gen is all about saving you time, increasing read speeds by gigabytes per second. Again, this has has to do with the fastest SSD tech in the world, going from spinning disks, which is what the Xbox One X even uses. Uh, we've been told that while many games will function across generations, so again, games are still going to support Xbox One X and the original Xbox, next-gen features such as ray tracing, dynamic reflections, and the like will probably be exclusive to Lockhart and Anaconda, or new APIs that come as part of the Game Core OS, which is also part of the Window Core OS effort we've been covering. Yeah, Window Core, a, I'm not going to dive too deep into that because that now, now that really gets into Microsoft, but... Um, yeah, they're developing some game-specific stuff in their Windows Core OS, uh, which is going to be great for PC and for Xbox. Um, that says Scarlet will be able to run all previous gen games that are available on Xbox One today, including backwards compatible games that Microsoft has already announced. Yeah, which they, they already said literally day one, you can put any um, Xbox One disc in. It'll it'll install and work. You can download your digital library. It'll just work. Uh, that's really how everything should happen. I think when Switch 2 comes out, I really hope it's just fully backwards compatible day one without having to put in extra work. And I don't mean fully com backwards compatible like the Wii U was, where it was like a separate thing. Uh, it was basically they put a Wii inside the Wii U, and then you had to launch a totally separate system, like having two computers in, in one box. Um, yeah, that was, that was dumb. Uh, I mean, it, it's better to exist than not exist, but I hope that it's just fully backwards compatible, which is going to have a lot to do with tech. Uh, Xbox and Microsoft can do this because they moved to x86. x86 is widely and easily a PC standard that, you know, moves across generations. That's why games work on multiple generations of hardware on the PC side. I'm moving on down. Uh, the Xbox One X games will be unlocked frames and dynamic resolution, but perform better on Scarlet. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Monster Hunter World struggles to maintain 60 FPS on the Xbox One X, even in its performance mode. Even without an update, it should manage to hit its target FPS without an issue. And Scarlet Games will also be able to take advantage of increased SSD load speed, blah, 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 blah. On and on and on it goes. And uh, the point of talking about that is not, not to, like, tout Microsoft's horn because it's going to be a, a wonderful system. And I'm sure the PlayStation 5 is going to be absolutely wonderful as well. Uh, pricing is going to be key there. You know, is it going to be 500 600 bucks for the one? Is the other one? The other one's rumored to be, like, 200 bucks. Like, that's crazy if they can get... Lockhart out next gen better than Xbox One X at 200. That's that, that that's a really enticing price point. Um, I think it's just interesting on the whole that they're doing this. They're doing this two tiered system because the Switch itself. Um, I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, actually, let's let, let's go ahead and just look at um, GPU power compared. Now this is um, this is from uh, GameSpot. So think what you want of it, and it's not 100% accurate because. Uh, the exact performance of Switch isn't perfectly at one teraflop. Um, it fluctuates a lot, and it depends on if you're in handheld mode or docked mode. And uh, now it depends if you own this Switch or if you own a Switch Lite. So, like, that's another thing you have to take in consideration. So, that one teraflop of performance um, isn't 
an exactly perfect summation of what the Switch can do or, or what the Switch is doing all the time. But uh, there it is. It, it's about one T-flop, um, which is behind the Xbox One, behind the Xbox One S, and behind the PlayStation 4. But as you can see, close enough to the Xbox One specifically that you can reasonably get some ports. Um, again, though, there's a difference in RAM, there's a difference in CPU architecture and all that. So there's a, a lot of differences that make things much more difficult on Switch. I mean, there's only, like, what, 4 gigs of RAM, I think, on Switch? That's nothing. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's absolutely nothing compared to everyone else. Now, that means, heck, that's nothing compared to my phone. <laughs> um, that being said, uh, the reason I bring this up is... The Switch right now, um, you know, Microsoft talked about, you know, most games are still going to be available on the old Xbox system and the new one, just with better stuff. Uh, this could be like that for years. It was like that for years this past generation. Um, when you have a four teraflop uh, performance system out there, and the Switch is at one teraflop, basically uh, their their lock card's actually slightly below the PlayStation 4 Pro in terms of raw GPU output. Uh, that's going to keep Switch in the realm of getting third-party games even on the current Switch, even on this one right here, an OG launch model Switch, it's going to be able to stay within the realm of possibility to get third-party ports as long as third-party games are actually coming out on Lockhart, which why wouldn't they? Because it's likely going to have a fairly decent market share being the budget entry into the next gen. And I think that's important for Nintendo. And it's even more important if Nintendo does do a Switch Pro that hits 1.5 teraflops. It's 1.8, and it's basically a portable PlayStation 4. Maybe that's the Switch 2 or something. I don't know. But if that happens, that just makes things even easier for third parties to justify, hey, look, we're going to make that jump from Lockhart to Switch. It's just going to happen. Switch has a huge audience. They're buying The Witcher 3. They're buying Mortal Kombat. They're buying um, all, all these Final Fantasy games. They're buying these Assassin's Creed ports. You know, Assassin's Creed 4, uh, I, think, I think, just recently came out on Switch. I know that's not um, exactly uh, the, the best example. We would love to see Origins or something on Switch. But still, it's nice to see third parties are coming to Switch. And I, that's the biggest fear I think people have who bought Switch at like playing third-party AAA games. Is even if we get late ports, like we're still getting the Outer Worlds next year. You know, we're still going to get Doom Eternal after it comes to other platforms. Like, we're still getting these games, but are they going to vanish when Scarlet and PlayStation 5 come out? And the answer is, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Microsoft just did something that's going to keep Nintendo in the game. If Lockhart is real and this happens, Nintendo is going to still be realistically in the realm of getting ports. Uh, especially if Nintendo doesn't just stick with the base model Switch for the next three, four, five years, which I think we all know sometime in the next three, four, five years, there's going to be some sort of new model Switch that's more powerful coming out, right? Like, Nintendo's not just going to sit here and rest on their laurels, are they? I, I feel like they're going to still push something forward. So even if it's not next year, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, what matters is that uh, Microsoft, uh, in making a smart business move for themselves, making an interesting business move, uh, at least, and it, we'll see how it performs on the market. We know, you know, Switch Lite is, is cheaper than Switch, but sells worse than Switch, so we don't really know what's going to happen. But uh, with all of this in, in consideration, and obviously the Xbox could flop. We don't, you know, I, I think that Nintendo is going to be just fine with third parties. I think this just got rid of my fears that we're going to stop getting third party ports of games. Um, you know, Microsoft fully admitting games are still going to be coming to the OG Xbox even after these systems launch. Um, you know, you have um, them saying, hey, and even when things are next gen, I have ray tracing and all that. You know, we're going to have a, a lower performance model, which in theory could make porting the Switch even easier to do. So uh, I know for some people that are tech heads that want everything to push the max of the max, they might be a little disappointed because obviously games that are specifically made for, say, the most powerful box on the planet might not downscale as well. Uh, and uh, they might not want it, want it to downscale, you know, like a Red Dead Redemption 3 or GTA 6 or whatever's next. Uh, but I do think that uh, this is good news for Nintendo fans. This is good news for the Switch. And it's funny that Microsoft's the one doing it since Microsoft and Nintendo have been the ones that have been really buddy-buddy towards the end of the Xbox One generation here. Uh, we know we've been getting some Xbox games. I'd say Minecraft has been a smashing hit on Switch. Uh, over a million copies sold uh, in, in just Japan alone, let alone what's been happening all over the world with Minecraft on Switch. We're talking physical copies. We're not even talking the digital ones where Minecraft is always more popular. Um, we're talking Ori and the Blind Forest and Cuphead and like... Well, we don't know what, what the future is going to bring between Microsoft and Nintendo, but Microsoft did basically just 
you know, maybe unintentionally threw a bone to Nintendo and said, hey, we're going to make it so third parties can still bring stuff to you because we're going to bring a next-gen system uh, that our, everyone has to support, and uh, that's going to make it more able to downgrade to you. So uh, we'll see what happens. I think this is exciting stuff, that not just the next-gen stuff, but the idea that uh, even if you bought this launch day Switch, you might not have to worry for a few years. I think that that is a, it, just a, an amazing thing when it comes to third-party support. We've seen that AAA third-party support has been growing on Switch. A lot of us don't want it to shrink anytime soon uh, because we know, you know Nintendo's next-gen system can't be coming for at least two or three years. Uh, so Switch needs to remain viable with third parties during that period, and uh, Microsoft is basically ensuring that that is a distinct possibility. So uh, thanks, Microsoft, for inadvertently helping out Nintendo a bit. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about Xbox Scarlet, the Anaconda version, the Lockhart version, what you think about Switch's potential future with third-party games is going to be after next year because, again, remember, a majority of next year, you know, the next-gen platforms won't be out. So while they'll be talked about and while they'll be hyped, third-party games that come out in 2019 should realistically still be able to come to Switch. You know, we should be, able to be getting NBA 2K20 and stuff like that. That shouldn't even be a concern next year. It's going to be 2021 when we got to start being, oh, are we really going to get that next NBA 2K game? I hope so. Uh, and I think think that this just lends credence to the fact that we still will anyway so let me know what you think about it down in the comments below i am nathan robert Jones from nintendo prime i want to thank you so much for tuning in uh if you like this video like it if you don't well i guess drop a dislike uh subscribe for more content uh and I, one final note i do want to apologize uh, for there not being a prime news over the weekend I was having a, a big issue with my editing software for a few days. Uh, the issue is now resolved, uh, but it's one of those things where Prime News is very time sensitive on Sundays. So you, releasing it on a Monday or a Tuesday just doesn't make sense. Uh, it's a last week recap. And then another video I was working on was time sensitive as well that I had to cancel. So, hey, whatever. You got this video today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, hopefully we don't have any more hiccups like that. But, you know, things happen. All right. I'll catch you guys in the next video.